Hello and welcome to Model Airplane Maker. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how I like to paint and finish aircraft cockpits. I will show the steps that I take as well as the techniques and products that I like to use. Hope you enjoy. Aircraft cockpits contain tons of detail, and what makes that detail come alive is with careful painting. Now some might consider just hand painting all of the individual pieces a little bit easier, and certainly less tedious than taping it, but I, uh, I like to mask and paint it that way because I find that the finish is a little bit cleaner, and it also sets me up nicely for a dry brushing stage later on. Uh, my materials are basically a cutting mat, to me a tape, in this case 6mm, but any size will do, and a scalpel and straight edge. So the reason why I'm cutting it is because the edges of the tape, no matter how new it is, are always a little bit frayed. And if you're just not that careful of burnishing everything down, you will get some paint bleed underneath the tape sometimes. By cutting it, you get a really nice straight cut with no fraying even at the a very small level and all you need to do is put that cut part right beside the part that's going to or the bit that's going to be painted um, there's no real technique to this once you've got it you're just sort of finding little um, tape pieces that fit and you're filling in all of the sections that you do not want to have paint it's almost like a jigsaw at the end with the idea here being you want to just airbrush this uh, basic color and leave the rest of the cockpit unpainted. Whenever the instructions call out for black to be used in an aircraft cockpit, I don't use the full flat black or the full gloss black, I'm preferring to go with the XF69 NATO black by Tamiya. And the reason why is because if you go very dark, you'll lose a lot of the detail in your cockpit right away. By using the lighter shade and dry brushing and using washes, you can really make the detail pop. My airbrush technique is fairly basic. I mix a 50-50 mix of the paint with the, with the thinner, and I just use a, a low pressure of about 15 PSI. So as you can see, I'm just adding the mixed NATO black paint to the airbrush. And there isn't much magic here, I'm just using, like I said, about 15 PSI and I'm airbrushing the sidewalls, making sure that I'm just using uh, a technique where I'm not flooding the part with paint. I'm just lightly airbrushing the piece um, making sure that the paint is going on tacky but not wet and hitting all of the, the sides um, of the black pieces of equipment that are there.
Now that the parts are all painted with the base coat, it's time to make that detail come alive. I use Citadel paints for my dry brushing. I find it very easy to use because it's thicker. It's almost like a gel. You don't need much. Just dip your brush in there and wipe most of it off. You'll notice now that the great advantage to taping and masking your parts is that you will not make any mistakes in getting uh, or, or dry brushing parts of the, uh, the cockpit that you don't want to highlight. Take your time with this. It's actually better to have the paint even slightly dry on the brush as well. When you start building the color, use light passes hitting just the tops of the details on the side walls or the, um, the bottom of the cockpit and take your time again. You'll notice that as you're dry brushing, you're also lightening up the color, the, the base black color as well. And I find this is great because most of the time in aircraft cockpits, once you close it all up, it's very dark in there. So even these dark bits are going to start to show when, uh, when you've assembled this cockpit. As you can see, a lot of the detail painting has been done on the cockpit. Various switches have been picked out. Everything has been dry brushed. One last thing to do in terms of painting is to highlight the elevated or raised portions of the cockpit with a lightened color of the, of the paint that you used for the base. So essentially what I do is I take the base coat color and I add about 20% of white to it. And this allows me to really show a little bit more detail in terms of these raised portions. I also do it along the edges of certain uh, details just to highlight them a little better. Now you can also do this throughout the entire um, build. Instead of say dry brushing, for example, as you can do the exact same thing with a brush. I just find dry brushing to be a little bit faster and uh, just as effective. So after we finished our highlighting, now's the time for the panel wash. And my favorite one is the MIG ammo panel wash. It's very easy to use. You shake the bottle use a very narrow brush and it's extremely easy to clean up. The idea here is to just use a little touch at a time, let the paint flow around the parts or into the panel lines, and wait about 40, 45 minutes or so and then clean it up. Uh, getting back to that whole thing about flooding, I find that if you really go hard on washes it just makes for the cleanup afterwards to be that much more difficult and never as nice looking as if you have a very precise placement of the wash on the part. So we're getting down to the final steps, and this is when I add scratches to the cockpit. Some people might call this chipping, but to be a little bit 
more realistic. They are scratches. Inside of cockpits are always scratched up by pilots and whoever is working in there. How I replicate this is by priming the parts in silver lacquer paint. And then, of course, my base coat is acrylic, so all I need to do is have a sharpened toothpick. And then I just scratch off some of the base coat paint to reveal the silver underneath here and there where I think there'd be a lot of wear. One trick to this is to take a walk away from the part every now and then and then come back to see if you've done enough. Uh, like I said, less is more and it's uh, very effective just to have a few scratches here and there and then wholesale chipping of the entire part. Here are some final shots of the completed cockpit. As you can see with a flat coat, the detail really stands out. You have scratches, you have highlights, you have dry brush detail. Very easy to do, and it's right out of the box. Thanks for watching, everyone.